Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you all how to navigate through the user interface of Autodesk Maya. Um, two things before I dive right into the, uh, uh, the UI here. Um, if it's your first time ever opening the software, you'll probably get a uh, pop-up window that says something like um, if you've used Autodesk Maya before, would you like to import uh, previous settings from an older version of Maya? Um, if you've used Maya before and you're comfortable doing that, you're more than free to do so. However, um, there's another one that says maybe create uh, default uh, settings for Maya. Um, th we're going to be using, and I'm going to be teaching you using the um, uh, default settings. So, um, one of the things uh, I would like to go through is just show you right up here. We have a whole bunch of tabs file, edit, create select, modify, display, windows, mesh, edit mesh, etc, etc. Um, then we have our tab here. Now you'll notice once I toggle through these tabs, we're going to be using the modeling tab like 90 to 100 percent of the time. Um, so we'll get into animation a little bit, but um, for for the tab, for these tabs, we're going to be using this one a majority of the semester. Um, so if you do switch the tabs accidentally and you can't find something that you're looking for throughout the semester um, just beware that um, you may have just switched the tab so that's a really good one to just take a look at um, if you see some things up here that uh, you don't have it's because I have a couple separate plugins don't worry I'm not gonna be teaching that stuff uh, but substance is for substance pa uh, substance painter um, it's a texturing software, uh, you, which you can also get a free license for, but I'm not going to be teaching that or showing that, but uh, just to give you a heads up. And then RenderMan is a um, renderer that Pixar released to the public, and um, you can also download that for free, but we're not, I'm not going to be teaching RenderMan, um, but just so you know, it is available out there. And uh, that's about it. Those are the only two up here I can think of that may be different. Other than that, everything else should be the same. Um, getting a little bit lower here, we've got our uh, new uh, it's new new scene, open, save, undo, redo. Um, tons of stuff in here. If you'll see these little brackets that you can close, it's like a little uh, little bracket and you can click it and it'll shorten and extend so if you see some things on yours yours may be shortened or extended or whatever um, but really that's all you need to worry about for now uh, is just just knowing what's up here we have our snapping this is this will come in useful later in, in assignments snap to grid snap to vertice um, so on and so forth and then we have our different tabs here we'll be using the poly modeling tab for a majority of the semester um, sculpting will touch base a little bit and uh, as the semester goes on um, I'll go ahead and, and explain more in detail what these are uh, we also have uh, something that you probably don't have in your tab here so if you don't see it don't worry um, polygons user I think that's just some kind of default workspace that try to create for me once don't worry about it uh, pull down it is a separate plugin don't worry about that uh, turtle, uh, don't worry about that one. I don't believe that's in yours. Uh, it may or may not be. I can't remember. Um, and then RenderMan uh, is obviously something I already explained. Um, one of the more important things we need to look at workspace. I always will work in Maya Classic. I'm not even going to show you the other ones, um, but you can go ahead and toggle through them. But we're going to stick with Maya Classic. Uh, over here, we have a bunch of cool settings here. Um, so we have our channel box, that's this one with the little, it's almost like the layers, I don't know how you explain it, but uh, yeah, the channel box and the layer editor. Um, and that tab should open right over here. If it doesn't, and it's like sort of just like out in the open like this, just go ahead, drag it over, and try to, I'm going to try to get it to, there we go, uh, reset on the side. So you can sort of click and drag. Uh, different windows and dock them off to the side. Um, and I'm just going to 
put it back in the way I like it. Don't worry about the UV toolkit yet. I have that on here, but you don't need to worry about it until we get into texturing, which is in week five, I believe. Um, we also have our attribute editor. So that's this. Oh, not this one. This one. This is our attribute editor. There's nothing in here now because we don't have any objects in our scene. However, this is going to be extremely useful as we continue the uh, semester when we get into modeling. Um, then I have the tool settings, which I, just as I showed you before, I've docked off, off to the side. And I can basically um, click and click it on and off so I don't have to always go up here for it. So. Um, I like to have it docked right over here, but it's just a personal preference. And then the outliner, um, I'll show you that later, but uh, we don't need to worry about it right now. Um, this one here, we don't need to worry about. So don't worry about human IK. Uh, it's a little tab right here. And then we also have this one with a little hammer. Now this one's really cool. Uh, I'm going to close this human IK. Um, we have this human IK here, uh, or uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the modeling toolkit so we can keep that open uh, it really just has a bunch of the same things just in docked off to the side um, symmetry here is a is a useful one um, but you can also access that holding control and shift and right click and I'll get into keyboard shortcuts and stuff like that later um, and then combine smooth so we have combine they're all located right up here I believe this is smooth um, and it's just sort of a shorter way uh, because a lot of times you're going to be toggling back from the channel box attribute editor uh, and in this case you could use the modeling toolkit um, but just to go ahead and show you a couple things and obviously just as I did over here you can click away so you can make it uh, have your um, workspace here larger in view um, we have our layers down here uh, animation layers but we don't need to get into too much down uh, about that uh, the timeline is located down here. When we get to animating, we will be using this timeline. Oh, uh, it's all right. I'll just, you can see it's right down here. And you can just click anywhere. Um, it just starts at zero or one and the far left where I'm sitting. Um, <clears throat> so that's our timeline down here in this bracket. Uh, this right here will allow you to adjust the size of your timeline. Um, and then over here, we have no character set. We're not going to worry about that too much our frames per second. Um, this is our play when we're playing animations and skipping frames and yada yada. Uh, we have a script editor down here. Um, we don't really need to dive into that too much but just to give you a quick show it literally goes through everything you've done in the scene uh, from the time you opened it. So um, if you're wondering why something happened you can pop this open and see. Uh, you can notice I changed the playback options that was the size of the timeline here. Um, but yeah and then really really useful over here on the left side the arrow tool is something that we will be clicking often and then we have our different viewports here so the two that we will primarily be using are right here we can click it right here to enter our few four viewport uh, UI where we have our top our front our side and our perspective and you can see it's got a little uh, arrow uh, sort of a compass if you will showing you which direction you're sh uh, showing with X Y and Z um, coordinates um, and you can see front is Z side is X and top is Y so um, anyway and then if you want there's another quick way you can do this you can just tap spacebar and it will toggle in between the viewports whether one or four so it's uh, really commonly used um, it does make things a little bit shorter when you get into modeling if you need to do something in your side viewport front viewport yada yada and then jump back into your perspective um, so um, that's really useful and um, that's pretty much all I've got on the navigating the UI um, in the next video I will go ahead and show you a little bit more um, about getting started, controls, uh, how to actually scroll through here. Um, but that's all I've got on the user interface itself. Uh, if you have any questions, um, be sure to message me. But um, yeah.
Uh, I hope you, I hope this was sort of easy to follow, but it's just a basic layout of what we have in front of us when we open the software. Thanks for watching.